Okay, so this time our topic is security and personnel. So when we say security and personnel, of course, uh, upon the completion of this, this topic, no, we should be able to describe where and how the information security functions should be positioned within organization. We could be able to explain the issues and concerns related to staffing the information security functions. We can enumerate the credentials that information security professional can earn to gain recognition in the field. Illustrate how an organization employment policies and practices can support the information security effort. Identify the special security precautions that has, uh, must be taken when using contract workers. We can explain the need for the separations of duties. Describe the special requirements needed to ensure the privacy of personal data. So, of course, when implementing information security, an organization must address various issues. First, it must decide how to position and name the security functions. Second, the information security community of interest must plan for the proper staffing for the information security functions. And third, the IT community of interest must assess the impact of information security or on every IT function in adjust job descriptions and documented practices accordingly. And finally, the general management community of interest must work with information security professional to integrate solid information security concepts into the personnel management practices and the organizations. So in order to assess the effect of the changes will have an organization personal management practices, the organization should conduct a behavior feasibility study before the implementation phases. That is in the analysis phase. The study should include an investigation of the levels of employee acceptance of and resistance to change. So employees open feel threatened when an organization is creating or enhancing an information security program. So employees may perceive the program to be manifestation of an attitude and might have questions, the monitoring, the security staff, and of course, the delays of the information in security technologies. So to give us more details about the topic, let us all welcome our presenter. Security and personnel. What is security and personnel? Addresses security program, rules and responsibilities implemented during all phases of staff employment, including staff recruitment and termination. The organization screen applicants for critical positions in the operation and maintenance of the control system. The organization trains personnel when they are hired and provides subsequent refresher, training on their job tasks, responsibilities, and behavioral expectations. Concerning the security of the control system, the organization may consider implementing a confidentiality or non-disclosure agreement that employees and third-party users of control system facilities must sign before being granted access to the control system. The organization also documents and implements a process to secure resources and revoke access privileges when personnel terminate. And here is the basic illustration of security and personnel policies, outline methods of network protection for companies. In this lesson, you will learn more about these types of policies and the various security methods implement for IT security. Security and personnel are expected to comply with a variety of methods designed to protect the companies they work for. Here are a few common ones. The first is clean desk. Everybody likes a clean desk. But did you know it's actually a form of security control for a business? It means quite literally that employees are expected to keep their working areas organized and litter free. The second is dual control. Dual control is another example of a security measure put in place to protect a network or business. This policy, however, requires two people to be involved. Basically, what dual control means is that two people may be required to enter password to certain systems to make changes or to access particular files. And the last is acceptable use. Do you know how you are allowed to use your computer or what you're allowed to use it for? That's one an acceptable use policy covers, which appears in some form at just about every business where computers and other devices are being used. Acceptable use simply defines how this device can be used by employees and employees' responsibilities towards these machines. 
In general, what are some purposes of security and personnel? First, a security discipline that assesses the loyalty, reliability, and trustworthiness of individuals for initial and continued eligibility for access to classified information. And the second, procedures to ensure that persons who access a system have proper clearance authorization and need to know as required by the system security policy. And the last, the discipline of assessing the conduct, integrity, judgment, loyalty, reliability, and stability of individuals for duties and responsibilities requiring trustworthiness. Why security and personnel matters? Reduce the risk of harm to your people, customers, and partners. Reduce the risk of your information or assets being lost, damaged, or compromised. Have greater trust in people who access your official or important information and assets. Deliver services and operate more effectively. Insider threats come from our past or present employees, contractors, or business partners. They can misuse their inside knowledge or access to harm our people, our customer, our assets, or our reputation. Personal security focuses on reducing the risk associated with insider threats. The common insider acts include an authorized disclosure of official, private, or proprietary information, fraud or process corruption, an authorized access to ICT systems, economic or industrial espionage, theft, violence or physical harm to others. Many security breaches are unintentional and result from a lack of awareness or attention to security practices, being distracted or being pulled into unwittingly assisting a third party. That's why security and personnel are so important. And that's all. And here are the references link from this topic. Thank you for listening. <clears throat> okay, so as far as the discussion of uh, your classmate is concerned, no? so the we need to consider, of course, the position and the stopping the security functions no? uh, in the personal uh, security. Uh, we need also to entry uh, into the information security profession. Uh, like information security positions, the use of a standard job description can increase the degree of professionalism in the information security field, as well as to improve the consistency of the rules of, uh, and responsibility among the organizations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, now. Uh, the security managers are accountable for the day-to-day -day operations of the information security program. They accomplish objective identity or uh, objectives identified by the CESO and resolve issues identified by technicians. <clears throat> so we have also actually different uh, system security certified uh, practitioners no? and certifications. Actually, I'm also a passer of the information security. No? Uh, and a, a security certified program at the same time. So the employment policies and uh, practices to create an environment in which information security is taken seriously, an organization should make information security a documented part of every employer's job description. So in other words, the general management community of interest should integrate uh, solid information security concepts into the organization's employment policies and practices. So the section that follows examines the important information security related issues associated with recruiting, <coughs> hiring, firing, and managing human resources in the organizations. So we need to identify the job descriptions. You, you need also to interview them, of course. In interview, 
background checks, certifications, policies, covenants and agreements, and of course, the contracts during the hiring process. <clears throat> So, I think that's it for the personnel and information security.